Section 11-4 is called inscribed angles, okay? And the first theorem is called the inscribed angle theorem. And you're going to start with a drawing of a circle. We're going to put vertex B on the circle instead of at the center. And we're going to draw that angle so that it goes to the other side of the circle. And we'll call this arc AC. Okay. So this theorem says exactly what Sebastian prediction, predicted is that the measure of angle ABC is equal to half of whatever that arc is, the measure of arc from here to here, AC. Okay? So if you start at the arc and you go down to the angle, you're going to take half. Works the other way too, right? If you're going from uh, the angle to the arc, you want to double it. All right, so we're going to look at example one and two. You only have to draw this once. Example one and two uh, use the same drawing. Okay. All right, so let me give you some measurements here. This angle right down in here, angle PRS, is going to be 27 degrees. And this arc from P to U is going to be 118 units. Sorry, 118 degrees. <coughs> and so for example number one, we're going to find the measure of angle P, R, U. Okay, if it was a central angle and, and the arc, they would be the same measure, but, but, but now that it's inscribed, it's either going to be half or double. So we have to figure out which way we're going. So we're going to look for angle P, R, U. So take your finger or take your pencil and tap it out. Here's P, here's R, here's U. So we want this little angle right in here, right? We want this degree, okay? So we're going from the arc to the angle. Should we double it or half it? Half of it, take half of it. So we're gonna say that the measure of angle PRU is gonna be equal to half of that arc, PU. It's stinky, okay? So we actually have a measurement there of 118 degrees. So we're going to say half of 118 degrees. You type it into your calculator, you should get 59 degrees. Okay. All right. Example number two, using that same drawing, okay, this time we're going to find the measure of arc. SP. Okay. So you go over to the drawing and you find arc SP. Here's S, here's P. So we want this arc right here. So if we're going from the angle to the arc, do we double it or half it? Double, double it. So we're going to say that the measure of arc SP is equal to twice whatever this angle in here is, twice the measure of angle PRS. And we know that PRS is 27. So we punch it in the calculator, I got 54. <coughs> Any questions on example number one or two? Pretty straightforward, right? Okay. We're going to look at something called corollary 11-4-2. And if you have your sheet out, you can read along with me or you can just listen.
Yes, sorry. Pull it out of here. Add it in another spot. I don't know right where it's at. <coughs> it says that if in the if inscribed angles of a circle intercept the same arc or are subtended by the same chord or arc, then the angles are congruent. Okay? So here's what happens. We have this circle, right? We're going to start with the circle almost every time. And we're going to have arc AB over here, right? So we have this arc right here. We're going to kind of highlight it because that's what I want you to focus on for a minute. <coughs> this arc is going to be created by this uh, inscribed angle over here, which we'll call the vertex C. So we have angle ACB. All right. It just so happens that this same arc has another angle. We'll draw it right here to the vertex D. So we have angle ADB. They're sharing this same arc. So this angle, ACB, has this arc, and this angle, ADB, also has this arc. Guess what? There's another one. A over here to E, back over to B, there's another angle that shares this same arc. They're, they are all sharing this same arc. So here's what this corollary says. This corollary says that if they're all sharing this same arc, they're all going to have the same measurement. So angle ACB is going to be congruent to angle ADB, which is going to be congruent to angle AEB. They're all the same because they're all sharing that same arc. <laughs> I'm going to move this up. You'll see it in just a second. There it is. I need to shrink it just a tad, huh? Can't see that one quite. There we go. All right, which leads us to another theorem. There's another theorem called 11 4 3. And again, it starts with a circle. And it says this that if you have this diameter, so a diameter has to go through the center, we'll call that C, that if it creates an inscribed angle, that guess what? From here to here on this arc is how many degrees? It's half a circle, it's a semicircle. So does anybody know how many degrees that would be? 180. So we've got 180 degrees out here, and this angle in here is going to be how many degrees? Will we half it or double it? Half it. So half of 80 is 90. So I'm going to make that into a little box, right? That's just our special, special one. So if it's a semicircle, then it's going to create a 90 degree angle. That is probably going to come in very handy, right? Because that creates a right triangle right here, okay? So the, that's just a special measurement that you're going to see, all right? Example number three. We're going to start with a circle, and we're going to draw a diameter. So it's going to go through the center from N to Y. It's going to create an inscribed angle over here. We'll call the vertex Z. And if it's a diameter, it's going through the center. So we've got 180 over here. That makes this angle right here 90 degrees. So if it's 5A plus 20, if we're asked to find A, all we do is we take that 5a plus 20 and set it equal to how many degrees? 90. 
subtract 20 from both sides. And we get 5a equals 70. Divide both sides by 5. So a is 14. Which leads us to example number four. Same theorems we just talked about. They're all, all kind of related. Uh, we're going to have a vertex over here. We'll call it J, leading to L and M. So we have that inscribed angle. And then from this same arc, <clears throat> this is our shared arc, we're going to have another inscribed angle over here. We'll call this one's vertex K. Okay? So this angle right here is going to be 5, 5B minus 7. And this angle over here is going to be 3B. And we're asked to find the measure of angle LJ, LJM. Okay? So here's the thing. If these two inscribed angles share this same arc, then they should be what to each other? congruent or equal, right? And if it was just, if this one was 35, we'd say this one is 35 degrees as well. But instead of just having a number, we have algebra. So we set them equal to each other. Our two algebraic expressions creating that algebraic equation. I'm going to subtract 3b from both sides. I'm going to add 7 to both sides. These cancel, these cancel, and I have 2b equals 7, and then I just divide by 2, and I get B equals 3.5. <coughs> and we'd be done if they were just asking us for B, but they want us to plug it back in. So the measure of angle J, sorry, LJM is going to be equal to, and it doesn't matter which one we plug it into, because they're equal, right? They're sharing that same arc. So which one looks easier, the 5B minus 7 or the 3B? 3B, so I'm going to go 3 times 3.5. Punch it in my calculator, I got 10.5 degrees. All right, we're almost done. I'm going to move this up. And you'll see it right there if you're still copying it down. And I believe we just have one more theorem. This one is called theorem 11-4-4. And let me read it to you, but then we're just going to draw a picture for it. So here's what the theorem says. The theorem says if a quadrilateral is inscribed in a circle, then its opposite angles are supplementary. Okay, so we've been drawing angles in there. And we've even ended up with a couple triangles, but now we're going to put in a quadrilateral. Quadrilateral has how many sides? Four. So I'm going to draw in a quadrilateral, and it doesn't even have to be like a perfect rectangle. It can kind of be uh, uh, tilted one way or the other. And we'll call this G, H, J, K. This theorem says that the opposite angles are supplementary. 